poo transplants. There are some topics where the name alone is enough to put you off digging deeper. But bear with me, because the idea of poo transplants might be gross, but they have the potential to not just save lives, but maybe even change medicine as we know it. Coming up, I will cover how and why you could have a poo transplant, but let's start with what a poo transplant actually is. The more polite term is faecal transplant, or to be more precise, FMT, faecal microbiota transplantation, or even bacteriotherapy. But you know what, it's all pretty much the same. You take one healthy person's poo, and you put it in the intestines of a sick person. This is usually done with an enema, although various other methods have been used, including capsules that you swallow. Yeah, we recently uploaded a clip from the series Gut that shows the poo being dissolved into a solution, so I'll link to that at the end of this video. You're welcome. After hearing that, uh, the next question you'll probably have, after you've got rid of the small amount of sick in your mouth, is why do we do it? Well, there's strong evidence that it works. In 2013, a clinical trial showed that a transfusion of healthy poo into a sick person worked much better than the standard antibiotic treatment for recurring infections of Clostridium difficile bacteria, or C. diff. That's an infection that affects over 20,000 people in the UK alone each year. Given that these bacterial infections gave people persistent and severe diarrhoea, they must have been very grateful. In fact, the trial was stopped early because it was too successful and patients were complaining if they weren't randomised to receive the treatment, although they probably didn't enjoy the process much. In this clinical trial, they gave the small intestine an infusion of faeces via a tube inserted through the nose. As for how it works, well, it's all got to do with our gut microbiome, the trillions of living organisms that make their home in our digestive tract. If you dry out some poo, it's roughly 40% microbes in there. If you leave it wet, then there are enough live ones to colonise someone else's gut. In other words, move some poo packed with healthy microbes into an ill person's small intestine, and they could reset the diseased community in there. It's already used in UK and US hospitals to treat recurring C. diff, but what about the future? Can we standardise this treatment? And can we make it less pooey? Well, at the moment, it seems like poo is the only way to go. There are some companies working on pills that contain cocktails of microbes without the poo. But just this year, one of the most high profile of these published very disappointing trial results. The future might lie in poo banks. In 2013, some MIT grad students founded Open Biome, a stool bank that apparently pays $40 per healthy poop, which sounds great. But getting in, well, getting a sample in, is apparently harder than getting into Harvard. They standardize the samples, they remove food particles, and they carefully test the donors to check that they have the healthiest lifestyles possible. Donors have to be real poop superstars. That means low BMI, no antibiotics in the last few months, and no family history of cancer. These barriers to entry mean that the poop that Open Biome keeps is real premium stuff, offering a unique repository of healthy faeces that doctors can make withdrawals from to help their sick patients. In the future, we might see even more banks like this, and some have suggested that poo be reclassified as a bodily tissue, like donated blood to make this easier. It makes sense, since some people do consider the microbes in our guts like a virtual organ. This is why many people suggest that poo transplants could change the world, and even be useful for people without obvious diseases. One study found that mice given microbes from obese mice became obese themselves. So there's interest in finding out if the reverse is true. Could microbes help you lose weight? There's also a thriving DIY community who try it out for all sorts of things, even baldness and bad breath. Some people do feel that their DIY poo transplant really helps them, but then again, it does mean that you've got people running around shoving strangers' poo inside them with no screening for infectious diseases and no evidence for safety or helpfulness. And that is why the BBC have asked me to say, please don't try this at home. A fun story though, uh, there was one anthropologist who studied the gut ecosystems of the Hadza, an African hunter-gatherer tribe. He ended up using a turkey baster to give himself some of their poo as a transplant apparently to his doctor's complete confusion. No one's yet been badly hurt, but with some DIY enthusiasts reportedly asking if their dog's poo could be donated to them, it might only be a matter of time. We think it's best to leave it to the poo-fessionals. Sorry, you know me, I love a bad pun. So uh, click here if you want to see that link to the guts clip that I mentioned earlier. Click here if you want to see what happens if you poo on a plain toilet. Should you press the flush while you're sat on the throne?